Welcome back to Yahoo Finance Live, everyone. It's time for our triple play, a look at the three tickers that we are watching and what's been moving them. Now, for my pick, I'm going with Kathy Wood's ARK Innovation ETF, ticker symbol ARKK. Now, it paired back slightly from its session highs for the day, but as you see, it's still up for the day more than 4% at $62.53. Now, obviously, it's being lifted as a lot of tech stocks were thanks to some of that optimism that we saw with that upswing coming out of the Fed announcement. But it is down for the it is down year to date. Now we did see that eight of the stocks hitting yearly lows are among their most heavily weighted positions. That represents about 42%. And two thirds of this ETF's holdings have fallen to or near 52 week lows this week. Now, those include a health company, Teladoc, streaming service, Roku. You have crypto trading platform, Coinbase, music streamer, Spotify, and the mini metaverse known as Roblox. But investors do still seem to be sticking with ARK, though, and betting that a rebound, hopefully a sustained one, could be on the horizon. Yeah, it's a game of either sticking with ARK or going with perhaps the shark play on the other side, which is the... ATF that's essentially just shorting ARC. And I think for what you've mentioned, it really does come down to some of those stocks, some of the positions, the components within ARC that have that highest weighting. You mentioned Teladoc, that's six and a half percent of this. You also mentioned Roku. I believe you also mentioned a company in Block or, or Zoom as well. And what we've continued to watch in all of those, especially as we move away from some of those pandemic darlings that are especially outsized within the ARC innovation um, play here in the ARK Innovation ETF, that particularly has meant the broader decline, this broader move down and this trend lower for ARK as of right now. Uh, and what Kathy Wood would continue to try to put out there for the investment community and try to say is that a bet on ARK is a bet for American innovation. Uh, and we'll see if that trade and that ethos also holds up. I mean, I think we all should hope that innovation holds up broadly. But for the individual names that are a part of that, we will see how investors continue to dive into uh, some of those companies and their shares as well. And then additionally here, I got to talk about one that has been kind of well off of the table for a while here, uh, and for good reason. But APRN is the company I'm tracking here on the day, Blue Apron. Their shares are moving higher by about 2%. And it's on the addition of breakfast options. And if any of us remember how much this company has stumbled, even getting out the gate when it did go public, of course, right before it was about to go public, Amazon had announced that they were going to acquire Whole Foods. I believe that was back in 2017. And then when Apron finally did make their debut, you essentially had shares close flat on the day. If that wasn't telling of what was to come for the company in the years later, it certainly has been a rough go at it. We'll see if breakfast options work. I personally think that we're going to see the breakfast wars emerge uh, on the other side of this pandemic once we clearly get back to kind of the in-person capacity and people trying to find those fast options in the morning. I think Blue Apron, this is something that should have come a long time ago, but I'm glad it's here, quite frankly. Brad, what are they going to do? Are they going to ship me eggs, bacon, and maybe an apple to eat in the morning? I, I don't know how that's going to work out. Blue Apron, by the way, was supposed to be an early pandemic favorite, and it quickly lost its luster. So this stock has just really never gotten off the ground. But I am here to talk about Occidental Petroleum and Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway. They are buying an additional, they did this Monday through Wednesday, 18.1 million shares. And uh, you can see the stock is up about 9.5% today. So this ups their stake in the company to 14.6%. They started uh, buying earlier in the month and they had been in before. Now, Buffett has a storied history uh, with Occidental Petroleum. He lent them $10 billion, got preferred stock, generating an 8% interest rate that I believe Occidental is still pro uh, paying them. And that is to cover the purchase of Anadarko Petroleum. That was years ago. And it was somewhat controversial. Carl, Carl Icahn got involved in the trade. He was pushing for change uh, on the board and also in the C-suite. And you can see here, after one year, the stock has doubled. In fact, almost all of that has come this year. So given that, I think there is a lot of, uh, nobody's really remembering that storied past, but Warren Buffett definitely getting into energy. Um, I just want to show you before I close out here, a 10-year Occidental Petroleum uh, chart, because we can see the 60 level. The 60 level right here has been in play for some time. And I think it's going to take a little pause before it can go higher. It doesn't have to do that either. It could go lower, but we'll have to see what comes of that. Also want to check out real quickly, 
Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway, because this stock has been making record highs as of recently. Yesterday was the first day it closed over $500,000, half a million dollars per share for the first time. And you can see it's up uh, another 2% today. So interesting trade here. Never really felt the way the other mega caps did. You can see some pretty good trading here for Berkshire this year. That's a remarkable 10-year chart that we just showed for Occidental. We'll continue to track all of these stocks and much more going into the closing bell. That's our triple play for the day.